Have you ever been to the beach? Have you ever seen seashells there? Have you ever collected them and wonder who lived in there? Wonder no more. <gasps> you are looking into the eyes of a Florida fighting conch, and they like to watch the tides to see when it's coming in so that they know when to go to the water. You are looking at a live fig, and you can see its entire body here, including its head, and a little eye spot. All of the seashell creatures I'm showing you today are mollusks, and they are invertebrates, and they include snails, slugs, mussels, and octopuses. They live in water or damp habitats, and most have a shell. This guy right here is a male or boy fig, and you can see that the body is labeled. The mantle is the body. The foot is the muscle it uses to move along the sand. You can see the little black dot that's an eye on its head, and you can see the male reproductive organ, and then the siphon. And the siphon is where it pumps water in and out of its body. Here is a gigantic horse conch, which is a really large mollusk, and its body is bright orange when it's alive. You can see the foot is hard and has a flat piece on it, and it's used like a little door to close themselves inside, and it's called an operculum. This little apple murex shell is alive because you can see the operculum is shut. It's closed, keeping the little guy inside. Here's another shell called a lightning whelk, and you can see that the operculum is tightly closed. So the animal's in there, you just can't see it. It's really safe in there. Now here is a live shark's eye shell, and you can see why it's called that. The design on the shell looks like a shark's eye. They're also predators, and they will eat other mollusks. An interesting thing about them is they can inflate their size uh, using water and then deflate it to fit back in its shell again. Here's a true tulip shell, and you can see that the body looks like a sky full of shiny stars, and you can see the operculum is sitting out, so it's coming out of its shell. Here's a living banded tulip shell, and it is moving across the sand. Can you see the pattern that it's making as it uses its foot to move itself across the sand? These guys are called baby ears, and they're a mollusk that are too fat to pull all the way into its shell, so they have a little bit that sticks out like that. This is a live cockle shell opening up, and if you've ever found shells that look like they have two halves to them, well, that's what this looks like alive. Here's a live pen shell that are really commonly found, and you can see this one has its little foot sticking out. And you'll often find all of these shells in really shallow water in tide pools. Now these are live slipper shells. These are really interesting little guys. They attach themselves onto dead shells and they stack themselves up. And the bottom one is the female and the top one is the male. And so they can reproduce that way. Well, here there's three of them. And when the bottom female dies, as you can see her shell has been cracked, then the top one, that's a male, can actually flip itself to become female, and then the next mollusk on top is a male. And then that continues to happen as each shell, uh, each animal dies, that a new one, another guy, will come on over and they will flip between male and female throughout their life cycle. I bet you all have heard of hermit crabs. Here's a little hermit crab who is living in an empty spiral shell. They use them as homes and they have to change shells as their body grows. They start off really tiny and they can get really, really big. So here's a hermit crab that is still looking for a shell. You can see its body has a little, the foot has a little uh, curl on it and it likes to put that into spirals. And so you need to leave uh, shells on the beach so these little guys can find new houses as they continue to grow. And here's a guy who has found a new house, but looks like his new shell is a little bit on the big side for him. But I don't know if he'll keep it or if he'll just wait to grow into it. It is a pretty nice looking one. Here's a collection of colorful dead sea urchins. And these are not mollusks. These are in the same family as sea stars and sand dollars. And they come in all different varieties, as you can see right here. They are really beautiful. Here are sand dollars. The one on the left that's gray is alive and the one on the right is white and it is dyed. And the gray is the skin and the white is kind of the bone underneath it. 
And when they're alive, they feel very leathery and they can move around. Here's an example of one of these sand dollars moving. Notice the interesting path it makes. Here's a collection of live sand dollars and you can see how big they are that several fit on this person's hand. Here is a dead sand dollar after its skin has decomposed and this is what you can most often collect because they are no longer alive. And they're used for jewelry and for collector's items and they're very beautiful. Our last critter of the day is the starfish and there are 2,000 different species of starfish and they move along the sand using hundreds of tube feet. They can have up to 40 arms, although we're usually used to them having only five arms. But they even have eyes on the end of each arm. Here's a picture. You can see the little black dot at the end of those arms that are circled. Those are eyes. Here are several different species of starfish. And they're actually not fish since they don't have gills or scales or fins. And so scientists actually prefer for them to be called sea stars. They are related to sand dollars and sea urchins. And if you look at the bottom left uh, sea star, you can see that they can regenerate a lost arm. And that's what this one is doing. It takes about a year. It's a pretty slow process. And they are protected by armor. Some of them are leathery or prickly. And you can see the difference between them in these species. They also don't have blood in their circulatory system. It's made up mostly of seawater. Also, their mouth is on the underside of them, so when they wanna eat something, they attach themselves to it using the underside of their body, and they actually take their stomach out of their mouth and envelope whatever it is they're trying to eat and pull it back into its body and eats it that way. Sea stars, cool. let's get to drawing some of that guy's friends. So you're gonna pick a seashell that you like. If you don't have any seashells in at your house then you can go ahead and go online and go search for pictures of seashells or there are some stills of seashells, three different pages of seashells if you'd like to look at that and pause and draw from that. So here's one of the pages that you're gonna find right here and we're gonna practice drawing two different seashells just to kind of go over how to do that. So let's start with a fairly simple one. Let's start with this seashell right there. The first thing you wanna do when you're drawing a seashell is to figure out what shape it is. So this is mostly a round shape. It's almost like, um, like it would come to a point here and then someone cut it. So if you're gonna to try to draw that, the first thing you would do this is my scrap paper, and you should practice as well, is draw what it would look like if it came to a point. So once you kind of get a feel for what this seashell would look like, say it's about there. Now you have the basic shape down. If you notice details, it does have ridges. This is not exactly a smooth edge. It has, between the ridges, it has a little bump. See that? So you're going to start with drawing these lines and try to keep them spaced out the way they are here. Some shells have them very close together and some shells do not. So you are going to work on getting these ridges in the pretty much the right places. Mine are not exactly in the right places. Let's see if we can fix that a little bit, huh? This is why we practice. Okay, now, now that we have your ridges or you have ridges, Let's tackle this edge. So I'm gonna erase it so that it's, I can still lightly see it so I know where I'm supposed to be going. But I'm gonna add these kind of bumps in between. And the more you do this, the kind of the more and more realistic it, it starts to look for you. There you go. 
Not too bad. So there is this seashell on paper. Let's try something a little bit tougher. Let's go for, let's see here. Oh, those are really small to look at. Okay, we'll stick them here. Let's see, let's go for something a little bit trickier like this shell right here. If you just look at the shape, it's like an oval that comes to a point. So let's try that. It's like an oval, a long skinny oval that comes to a point. Yeah, wow, like that almost looks like a giant ice cream scoop on a little baby cone. All right, now that we have the basic shape of it, we can see where um, this is part of the outside of the seashell and because it curls around, um, this part is the part that it's curling around. So how do we do that? Let's check out these shapes. So right here, there's a line that cuts right through there. Do you see it? So we are gonna cut ours right through there as well. All right, this has a little lip and it overlaps this line. That's right here. So we're gonna overlap it just like this one is and then it comes back and it comes down all the way down all right and then you would erase this because it overlaps so we have that nice little um, right there this guy all right now the back end this is an exactly round do you see this little like white triangle of negative space right there we want that so Let's create that there. See, I just made that and bring that on down. Okay, so now you have the basics of this shell. I think this could, could actually be a little bit bigger to make it look more realistic, more similar to that one. All right, now then if we start looking at details, this is not exactly smooth, there it goes um, this is one hump and then a little hump, little hump, little hump, and it keeps doing that all the way to the point. Do you see this line right here? Let's see, that would be probably about right here on my drawing. So then, just like last time, we're going to lightly erase. So you can still see the this little triangle here and create this little layered effect. In the shell like it's so tiny all right so now you have more of a realistic looking shell if you want to continue you'll see right here that this is kind of jagged it's got these little bumps here feel free to add those you can get into as much detail with this as you want all right we're not going to include all the details of the design like these um, really cool rectangular dots on here. We just want to get kind of the overall feel for how to draw these great little seashells. All right, for our, our real one that we're going to do, now that we know how to do this, you're going to need brown paper, and this is tan paper. This is actually Strathmore toned tan sketch paper. Any tan paper will work. And this is kind of the color of beach sand. So that's what you kind of want it to do. So let's set aside this iPad and get started. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is draw a wave. So there's gonna be a wave coming here, here's sand, and all the seashells have gathered where the wave meets the sand. Draw the waves. So draw a nice wavy line from corner to corner. You want big waves. See, this is a weird point. We want it to be a really smooth line. So make sure you don't have any points and make sure that your wave isn't like super tight and squiggly. You want it big and loose. I'm gonna draw that a little darker so it's easier to see. But you need to draw it lightly. Okay, and we can modify it as we need. 
I have real shells that my aunt collected back in the 50s, 1950s, when she was a child. She used to live on the coast in Louisiana and in Texas, and she collected all these different shells and things. There used to be tons of shells. So I'm going to be looking at real ones, and you can look at real ones or not, depending on what you have, and start drawing them the same way you sketched. And I'm gonna go ahead and start and speed it up for you guys. Cause I want yours to look like your own and not necessarily like mine. It always looks better and more realistic if you draw some of your creatures going right off the page, like the sand dollar. Once you have done that, let's go ahead and grab a skinny Sharpie marker and Outline only your shells, only the shells and these little creatures. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to grab a white chalk pencil. This one is just a white charcoal pencil and you are going to go along your ocean line here and you, the ocean when it hits the sand kind of foams and makes little bubbles and so that's what we're going to do here we're going to start adding highlights and bubbles we will be adding color and shading but right now we are going to start with these bubbles and all around where you had those the line, you are going to add these small bubbles and they're just circles. You want big ones and small ones um, all around, uh, going right off the page, all around. Now careful because this will um, smear if you touch it. You can kind of make it erase a little bit. So push fairly hard, Ooh, maybe not that hard and get yourself some bubbles. And then you're gonna wanna add highlights. So grab your white chalk again, and you're gonna decide where you want the highlights where the light is coming from. I'm gonna have my light coming from, I guess like right here. Let's move all these guys. And we're gonna highlight these creatures. So everything on my right hand side of my creatures is gonna be highlighted. Then it kind of curves over, so you're not going to see much of the highlight anymore. There we go.
you're going to do is you're going to add just a, a hint of color here. So you're going to grab your chalk pastel and get started. So you will want to make sure that you do have the waves coming in with your white. And if it's easier to do that with, I have a baby piece of chalk pastel, but if it's easier to do that with a full size piece of chalk pastel, go for it. And you're gonna start in with white and you're gonna draw this wave coming in all the way from edge to edge. And you want it to be a gentle wave. So think gentle thoughts. Then you're gonna come in with your blues, your ocean colors. So make sure your hands are clean and come in right behind your chalk, your white chalk with blue. And you can do that a few times to really get some nice movement. Now you still want to be able to see the sand because as the wave comes in, you can still see the sand. Make sure those hands are clean before I touch my paper again. And really come in with these light blue ocean type colors. Kind of teal is good for an incoming wave. And you're adding movement here. So not only it looks like the water is moving, but your strokes are nice and wavy, making movement in your picture. So it kind of has this whole waving diagonal happening. Okay. And to help those bubbles uh, to stick out even more, um, I'm going to continue up, right up, into those bubbles. So this water is kind of hugging right around those bubbles and hugging those seashells. Okay, the water is kind of making room for them, kind of going around it because those seashells are sticking up above the water. So I can come in with my previous blue. All right, right around the bubbles, you want to make sure that we see them. And one way of doing that is coming in with a darker blue Focusing more of your chalk pastel right around those bubbles, right around those shells. So it looks like it's really coming right up to there. All right, so you can kind of see how it's getting right up next to the bubbles so that you have a real, almost like an edge, a moving edge here. All right, now you can get in with some kind of darker blue. This one doesn't have very many blues. So I'm gonna come in a little bit darker. Might even come in with black. and let it also play with the water in here. So 
right in between those bubbles, right around those seashells. You want less dark as you go further away. So see, I hardly have any in the top right. It's all focused right against these bubbles and the shells. continue working on this until I feel like it looks like beach water. And you are free to do that as well. Switch back and forth with your colors. Don't blend it. Just get in there. Keep that movement going. Now I'm just coming in with some dark brown since I didn't have any black in this, but the dark brown actually worked really well. And just going around all those bubbles and all those seashells, trying to make the water look like it's moving around all of them. So as you're working on this, you're gonna wanna fill the deeper sections in with a lot more brown so that it has more depth and blow away any extra chalk dust that you have or tap it um, into the trash can and just keep working it and adding little lines, little curved lines so that it looks like you have little shadows and like the bubbles are causing little shadows. Okay, once you have that in, I'm gonna tap this, all the powder off. Come in with a darker tan color uh, so that you can add a little bit of shadow on with this brown and put the brown on the opposite side of where the highlight is. And that will help it to look more three-dimensional. And come in with a clean finger and rub. You can also add some shading in with like this conch shell gets dark right in there as does this one you can look at your original shells to figure out where the dark areas are or just remember and your last step will be add touches of sand in here, little bits of texture here.
So this has been already washed up and down the beach from the waves. So I am just doing diagonal in the way that this wave would move up the beach to give that wave even more movement. So it looks like it is actually having an effect on this sand. If you feel like that is enough, or if you want to come in and add more, you of course always can. Our last step is going to be to add some color to these sea creatures. So let's go ahead and grab some yellow to start on our sea star. Just add a touch of the color that you want. Don't do the whole thing. Just a touch. Just so you can kind of get a feel for what that shell may have looked like. And there you have it.